guys, how's it hanging? So something that you might not know about me, unless you just happen to know me pretty well, is that I absolutely love plants. I love surrounding myself with nature as much of it as I possibly can. And so that means that over time, I have managed to surround myself with quite a collection of house plants. A little while ago, I actually asked you guys over on my Instagram if a meet my house plants video would be something that you guys would be interested in. And the poll results said yes which by the way if you don't follow me yet over there you definitely should because not only can you kind of keep up with what I have going on but also if I'm in a little bit of a creative rut or I just want to know what you guys would like to see more of on my page or my channel I will ask in a poll and it's kind of a way for you guys to vote on what you're going to see on this channel kind of express your interests and get your voice heard so definitely if you don't follow me over there please do it would mean a lot but since so many of you said that that would be something Thing that you would be down for. This video is going to be all about some of my favorite house plants, all of which for this video are succulents, although not all of my plants are succulents. Succulents just happen to be my favorite. I think they're a lot of people's favorites. They've just exploded in popularity within the last few years, and I think it's because they're really easy to take care of. They are on the smaller side most of the time. They're easy to transport, and they're pretty hard to kill, which if you don't have a incredible green thumb is definitely a good thing and even though my green thumb is better than it used to be I still have my moments and having plants that are a little bit more forgiving is a must now I didn't just want to have this video be a hey here's my plant and that be the end of it I actually did a little bit of research because some of these plants have been gifted to me some of them I just ran into a store and bought and I didn't actually know too much about them so I did a little bit of background investigation into the different types of succulents that I have I have have their common names and if you are a little bit more of a nerd like I am I'll also be telling you their scientific names and I feel like I know my plants a lot better after this so if you're not a botanist or someone who is super well versed in plant sciences I highly recommend that you do that if you have house plants and don't know too much about them it's pretty interesting so anyway all of that aside let's jump right in to this video I'm really excited to show off my plants to you guys so first up for my plant introduction I did not realize before I started researching for this how many of one type of succulent that I have this is three of them and I actually have one more that I'll be showing you guys in a little bit but I found out that I have a whole lot of a type of succulent called Haworthia and I guess it kind of makes sense I mean when you think of a succulent this is kind of what you imagine the long pointy leaves and the kind of rosette shape and just the intricacy of the plant this is a succulent to anybody who isn't super familiar with all the different kinds now I am 99.9% .9 sure that all of these are Haworthia, however I'm not exactly sure what type of Haworthia they are. So if you are better versed in succulent science, definitely let me know down below if you know because I couldn't figure it out. And if there is some kind of app out there where, or a website where you can search this stuff pretty easily, let me know because Google was not really my friend in this, it was pretty tricky. At any rate, this is Haworthia, this little one in front and this one over here as far as I know are Haworthia fasciata or the zebra plant and these are pretty cool they grow in South Africa they're very hardy and drought tolerant these are the epitome of a succulent when you think succulent it's crazy to me that I have so many of them but it's pretty cool and I love knowing where they're from I mean South Africa that's really neat now next up is another personal favorite of mine particularly because of the story so this is a ghost flower or graptula petalum and if you follow me on Instagram you might actually remember when I got this I actually pulled this out of the ditch behind our site somebody must have thought that it was dying and just decided to throw it out and it wasn't quite as dead as they thought it was and ended up taking root and just thriving over there in the shade so knowing that it probably wasn't going to do too well through the winter I ended up pulling a few rosettes and putting them into this pot and they've done really really well since then and ghost flower I found out is actually native to Mexico so once again it's a very hardy drought tolerant plant something that's pretty neat about this plant is that depending on the conditions that it's growing in the leaves can kind of take on a bluish or pinkish hue just depending on sunlight water and soil conditions and that kind of thing mine are definitely more towards the bluish side but they're very very 
very light green in towards the very center where the newer leaves are. It's just such a beautiful plant, one of my favorites. And every time I look at it, I remember the fact that I didn't even have to pay for this. I literally just found it in a ditch, which I feel like doesn't happen very often unless you live in a very arid climate where succulents would typically grow. In this part of Texas, that's not really something that you see too much of. So this is a really cool story and I'm so happy that it's done so well. Next up is another fave. This is a jade plant or Crassula ovata. And this was a get well soon gift that somebody gave to me when I came home from the hospital back in January. And at that time it was very small. It was maybe this tall in the pot. And since then it has really exploded and taken off. It's such a beautiful, vibrant green color. This is another succulent that is native to South Africa, so very hardy. And it's known to be a lucky plant. And I think that that's pretty cool because the fact that this one has grown so much and done so well, maybe that's a sign that I have really good luck. Either way, it's a gorgeous plant. It was a really sweet gift from the person who gave it to me and I am going to be doing my square best to keep this alive for as long as I possibly can. Next up we have this green cutie. This is a princess pine or Crassula muscosa and you can definitely understand why it's called a princess pine because the way the leaves grow they do kind of look like itty bitty little pine needles. It's a very leafy succulent and almost doesn't even seem like it would be a succulent like it's not what you think of when you think of succulent but it's a plant that grows in an arid climate doesn't require a whole lot of attention to do really really well it's native to South Africa and Namibia and over there it's actually considered a little bit of an invasive because people will grant plant it as ground cover and it will just kind of explode and take off and do its own thing I have this one contained to this smaller pot and it's done really really well I probably will need to repot this in the spring but for the remainder of the winter I think it will be just fine. It's just a gorgeous leafy succulent. Again, not something that you would think of when you think succulent, but it's a very unique plant and that's why I like it. Okay, and last but definitely not least, we have three little succulents all in one planter. So this planter was originally a planter for a small bonsai tree. It was the second of only two bonsai trees I've ever had and both of those trees have died. Bonsai trees are just not in the cards for me. They are notoriously difficult to keep alive and after I killed the second one I just decided that I wasn't going to try anymore and so the planter became a succulent planter but it works really well because it has this tray in the bottom to catch water and it drains really well. This little plant here is the second Haworthia that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. It's really unique. It's got these leaves that look like they would be really like full and juicy, but it's actually a very hardy plant. I mean, all of these are obviously. I feel like that's the word of this video. I was really, really surprised when I found out that this was a Haworthia because I was definitely not expecting that. Over on this side, this little plant here is called Pink Granite or Sedevaria. It can grow up to six inches tall and will spill out of whatever planter it's been placed in and kind of travel away from wherever it's been planted. That's something that it likes to do. Obviously it's called pink granite because it has a pinky hue to the leaves. It's really really pretty. Another one of those iconic succulents that people love. Over on this other side we have a succulent that is maybe my top three favorites it's out of every kind of succulent that I've ever had but it's also been the most challenging. This is my second or third plant. Honey, I'm home. Hi. I'm almost done. So this plant is called an elephant rainbow bush and I will try to give you the scientific name. It's very long. It is a Portolocaria afra variegata and it's called an elephant rainbow bush because it grows in the African continent and elephants really like to eat it. Obviously over there it grows quite a bit bigger than what I have here but I said that this is my third plant because not only do elephants like it but something here in East Texas likes it too. I don't know if it's a squirrels or a bird or what but I had this plant sitting outside and all of these plants were sitting outside and they all did fine except for the elephant rainbow bush got absolutely decimated something came and took the leaves off of the stem and just destroyed it and that happened twice and I learned my lesson the second time and I haven't been keeping it outside anymore so if you have any thoughts on what that might be definitely let me know I haven't been able to figure it out and I'm scared to put this thing outside because I'm worried it's gonna get killed again so that's very weird definitely not something 
something that I was expecting but I really love this plant just because it kind of reminds me of a bonsai and like we said before I have horrible luck with bonsai trees I will never try to have a bonsai probably ever again and so this is the closest that I can get and it's just a beautiful plant and I like the fact that elephants like to eat it I think that that's pretty cool so anyway that is my succulent collection as it stands right now I kind of have to keep it under control because we live in a small space and we want to be reasonably mobile and having a whole bunch of plants isn't really conducive to that. Someday down the line I would definitely like to have more but this is a pretty solid collection. I like that I was able to learn so many fun facts about the different kinds that I have. Like I said if you have succulents and you don't know too much about them, highly recommend that you do that because you'll definitely find out some fun facts. Anyway that's basically it for this video. I wanted to keep it on the short side. I just thought it was something fun and different that we could do and like I said you guys seemed kind of interested in learning about the different plants that I have. So I hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Let me know down in the comments what kind of plants you have, what your successes and failures have been with them, and what plants you'd like to get in the future. And I hope that I will see you for the next video whenever and wherever that may be. Bye.